Okay, so a lot of people think that I'm Hindu or Muslim. So let's talk about my religion. Well, I am of the Sikh faith. Sikhism would be founded by this man, Guru Nanak Dev Ji, and he would synthesize a lot of ideas from Hindus and Muslims as he lived in the Punjab region of India, which had a lot of Hindus and Muslims. Just like every religious origin story, he famously met the one true God while taking a bath in the river. But one thing that was unique about Guru Nanak Dev Ji was that he believed that every single God was the one true God. So he believed that all the Hindus' gods were valid and all the Muslims' gods were valid. That there was no one true true God, that the true God was the God of all religions. In this way, he would become very respected in both Hinduism and Islam. This guru I want to talk about is the fourth guru of our religion, Guru Arjan Dev Ji. He'd be very famously killed by the Mughal state. You see, at the time, India was ruled by a Muslim state. Uh, now, why Guru Arjan Dev Ji was killed is actually controversial. A lot of Sikh historians say it was because of religious oppression, but a lot of objective historians say that it was simply over a dispute. To his son, Guru Har Gobind Rai, to militarize the Sikh people. You see, the Sikh people at this time were sort of a hippie people, right? Peace, loving, all of that good stuff. But when our religious leaders were being killed by the state, you had to militarize. Hargobind Rai would become very famous for wearing two swords. One, he said, represented my power in the physical world, and one represented my power in the spiritual world. And those two swords have become a very important part of our religion. And he would fight in some minor wars in order to protect our religions against some Hindu kings. For a little while, there would be peace within the Sikh religion. But once again, with our ninth guru, history would repeat itself as Emperor Aurangzeb of the Mughal Empire would kill our religious guru, Teg Bahadur, for not converting to Islam. He would behead him. He would have him sit down and he cut off his head. But some Sikhs in the town where he was beheaded would grab his head quickly and carry it up into the mountain. And there, up in the mountains, his nine-year-old son would cremate his father's head and become the last and final guru, Guru Gobind Singh Ji. Guru Gobind Singh Ji, as the last guru, would ultimately really define our religion. He would heavily militarize the Sikhs in order to defend our religion. Of course, we were being killed by Aurangzeb for our beliefs. He would courageously lead our people in the Sikh Mughal Wars, in which his whole family, including his four sons, would die in war defending our freedom of religion. He would end the guruship, which was the spiritual leader of a community, because he thought it was susceptible to becoming corrupt. So he would make the last and final guru our holy book, the Guru Granth Sahib. And he would completely eliminate the caste system. He would give every single male Sikh the last name Singh and every single female Sikh the last name Kaur, which meant lion and lioness. Ultimately, this was a way to get rid of the last names of the caste system because under this new religion and under him, we are now all equal and children of him and his wife. Ultimately, tens of thousands of Sikhs would lose their lives in defending our religion or being killed by the Mughals. Uh, Guru Gobind Singh Ji himself would unfortunately die due to an assassination before he saw Sikhs finally free from Mughal rule. As Mughals killed Sikhs was not fun. Some would be killed in boiling hot water. Some Sikhs would be sawed in half. And two of Guru Gobind Singh Ji's kids would be put in a wall, four sides, and on top, brick wall, to starve to death. So, uh, guys, the Mughals were not nice to us. Uh, I remember reading about this one time that Banda Shah was captured by the Mughals uh, and his wife and kids were uh, brought in front of the emperor and uh, he was told convert now or die and he said no and they cut off his head, kid's head first. Now does this mean that Sikhs and Muslims are enemies? No. No, there, there may be many bigoted Sikhs out there, but ultimately Guru Nanak Dev Ji, the founder of a religion, wanted us to have tolerance for all religions. And he was well respected amongst Muslims. His best friend was a Muslim. And our community is not without problems, right? Guru Gobind Singh Ji's plan to get rid of the caste system did not work. We ultimately ended up with a new caste system. But I think that our religion and our peoplehood has been built off of surviving and fighting against genocide. And that is just something that is very beautiful that I would like to share with you. And if you want to go to a Sikh temple, you are allowed to come in. We respect all religions. We think all religions are valid. We think your God is valid. 
we think our God is valid. We think we all share the same God, just under different names. And you are more than welcome to come to a Sikh temple. You will get funny looks, okay? I'm not going to lie. And we give out free food, so that's always nice.